When you live a notorious life, you're more feared than respected. See my face! The most vicious. The most violent. Go no hate, kill, take. The most dominant. Who the f are we? You get what you want because you take what you want. You dig? Gangland's most notorious. One million gangsters stalking America's streets. They can be found in every state and every city. If the police come right here, we beat their ass. Through unprecedented access to this lawless world. It was just about killing. 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 We've told their violent stories. All I wanted to do was hurt people. And reveal their dirty secrets. If they were making fun or they did something serious to us, we'd bring them alive. Along the way, certain gangsters stood out due to their frightening and vicious ways of life. Now, for the first time, Gangland has gathered the most hardcore Gs to reveal. My most notorious Notorious. Notorious. We live that Grammy nominated rapper Snoop Dogg was born and raised in the ganged up neighborhoods of Long Beach, California. There were a lot of notorious guys around me. You know, killers, riders, jackers, you name it. Growing up sort of fatherless, like a lot of the kids from the east side, these notorious figures became our father figures. Snoop Dogg was once a member of the Rolling Twenties Crips before becoming a rap star. While he has left the streets, his music is still inspired by his old hood. It's all life. If you take my head away, whatever I'm rapping about gonna still come out, because it's in my heart. It's not in here. It's in my heart. They always say you can take the homeboy out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the homeboy. The streets also provided inspiration for gangster rap pioneer Ice-T. I've been fortunate to see a lot of the sides of LA. See, I not only saw the gang banging side, I saw the drug dealing side. Ask your mama what this is. I saw the hustling side, the pimping side, the boosting side. So I walk lightly. I'm very fortunate to beat this age and made it out of there. Ice-T attended LA's infamous Crenshaw High School in the mid-1970s with some of the original Crips. Ice-T never joined, but he turned the grittiness of the streets into gangster rap. It's kind of like cheerleading for the hood, you know? And uh, I started to tell the stories of the streets, you know, how easy you could get shot, how easy you could get, get dealt with out there. Uh, I have actual gang banging rhymes that nobody's ever heard. You want to hear a gang, a, a gang rhyme? Strolling through the city in the middle of the night, on my left and on my right, yelling, cut, 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 ripped every I see. If you bad enough, come f with me. Snoop Dogg and Ice T rhyme about notorious G's from two categories gangsters that take orders and gangsters that give them. The ones that give the orders are known as shot callers. The shot caller. Those are the people in the set that can actually make things happen. Those are the people you need to know. Once you become the shot caller, the whole world knows. <laughs> 
shot callers lead by violent example. Anytime there was a fight, if it was an enemy, you know, I'm trying to stab him with a screwdriver. I'm trying to stab him with a knife, whatever, you know, a pitchfork, whatever, I don't care. But only one can be considered the most notorious. I didn't have a heart, no compassion for anybody. In my own way, I felt I was the black Scarface. Most notorious shot caller. Paps. Wasn't nobody that didn't live in that particular area was gonna come over there with anything. You know, plain and simple. We were getting shot and we were shooting That seed had bursted, so, you know, we were doing that wild, wild west thing. Ramon Williams, a.k.a. Paps, learned to gangbang on the streets of L.A. before moving to Las Vegas. I distinctly remember Vegas didn't have the reputation that it had then. I, I don't even believe that any gangs existed in Vegas at that time. Paps quickly changed all that. He set up Sin City's first West Coast gang and began calling the shots. We were doing all kinds of shit. I'm talking about, you know, burglaries, home invasions, robberies. If it made money, we were involved in it. One brazen crime put Paps and his crew on the map. August 1981. Paps and his homeboys set out to rob a crowded casino bar after getting high on Sherm. He ended up in a shootout with the cops. The police shot as I went back in the door and the glass shattered. So um, my homeboy was next to me, so I took the gun and started shooting back at the police through the busted glass. Paps quickly took a hostage and locked himself in a nearby freezer. The negotiator came, the same shit you see in the movie. They got the place surrounded, they ain't gonna never get up out of here. They just gonna eventually end up killing us. Paps surrendered and served over 20 years in prison before being paroled. When he returned to the streets, he did so with a vengeance. I was that hardened, gangster, thug, street warrior, if you will. Even more so than I was before. A hundred times more. Paps has been in and out of prison for the last 30 years. And he doesn't see the notorious lifestyle going away anytime soon. Just like pouring water in a glass with no sides. It would just keep flowing and flowing. It has no end. Only a beginning, but no end. But for many notorious gangsters, there is an end. A violent one. Violence is the glue that keeps the organization going. And if you have a, an organization and you are not uh, ready to employ violence, extreme violence. It's killing people. You might as well get out of town. Death can come in many forms. The blade, the bullet, even the needle.